The new start in U.S.-Soviet relations is heading in the right direction. Summit ended. The first step has now been taken. We're bringing our all-American doll to Moscow. Resuming cultural exchanges. With a heart that says, I love you. A new musical. As an art performed for its own sake, kids and families. <laughs> The re-establishment of cultural relations between the United States and the Soviet Union in 1986 is a story of two cities, two theaters, two women, and a classic American rag doll. The all-American musical called Rag Dolly was created here in an eye-catching building called The Egg in Albany, New York, home of the Empire State Institute for the Performing Arts, ESIPA for short. Part of the State University of New York, ESIPA is one of a kind in the USA, a professional theatrical educational program that uses live theater to motivate students and inspire learning. The concept was developed by Patricia Snyder, an associate professor of theater, and her students at the State University of New York at Albany. Mrs. Snyder directed a student production of The Wizard of Oz, which was invited for performances in Moscow in 1974. I wanted very much to make a good impression on the Russians. During the matinee performance, the production had caught on fire. There was a kind of a love affair going on between the audience and the members of the company. They showed their gratitude in forms of um, letters, in forms of cards, just flowers, hundreds of flowers. The ending was even much more exciting than the beginning. The State University's success in the Soviet capital prompted the New York State Legislature to translate Mrs. Snyder's arts in education ideas into legislation establishing the Empire State Youth Theater Institute. But long before the youth theater emerged in Albany, a legendary figure in professional theater for children had already shown the way in the Soviet Union. Natalia Satz, a prodigy of the October Revolution, established the world's first theater exclusively for young audiences in 1918. Confidant to some of the world's great composers and conductors, she commissioned Sergei Prokofiev to write a piece for the children of the Soviet Union. The result was Peter and the Wolf, the score is dedicated to her. Madame Satz convinced the Soviet Ministry of Culture to build a theater of her design, her dream of a modern facility dedicated to theater and music and dance for children. Sitting atop the Lenin Hills in Moscow, Natalia Satz's dream opened its doors in 1979 and is now considered one of the most important theaters for young people in the world. Natalia Satz and Patricia Snyder first met in the early 70s. Their friendship deepened over the years, built upon their mutual insistence on only the best for the children of their countries. In the early 80s, the success of the Empire State Youth Theater prompted the Empire State Plaza Performing Arts Center Corporation, which managed the egg, to approach the youth theater with a proposal to join forces and create the Empire State Institute for the Performing Arts, ESIPA. While maintaining a strong arts in education mission, ESIPA's program included the development of new works for the American theater, especially for family audiences. What was to be the creative team for Rag Dolly participated in two early ESIPA projects. The all-time good time Knickerbocker Follies was co-produced by composer Joe Raposo, who also contributed a song to the original musical review, tracing the history of American musical theater. Patricia Birch, choreographer of Greece on Broadway, supervised the Follies production. And later, playwright William Gibson brought Handy Dandy, his anti-nuke play of confrontation between a crusty judge and an activist nun, to ESIPA. 
After Handy Dandy, Patricia Snyder pursued playwright Gibson, who had also written The Miracle Worker and Two for the Seesaw, to write a play about Raggedy Ann. Gibson wasn't interested until... Pat Snyder inadvertently said, you know, Johnny Gruel wrote these stories to tell to his dying daughter. And I felt as though she'd hit me with a hammer. I said, didn't, that, didn't it ever occur to anybody that that's, that's a, the, the premise for a book, for a musical? Bill Gibson collaborated with Joe Raposo, the composer of many of the memorable tunes from public TV's Sesame Street. Raposo wrote a new score for Gibson's book, adapting two songs from his earlier score for an animated film about Raggedy Ann. Broadway choreographer and director Patricia Birch put Gibson's book and Raposo's music and lyrics on the stage. Jerry Harriton and Vicki Barral created the setting. Carrie Robbins designed the costumes, and Mark Weiss did the lighting. The Asipa Company and guest artists gave birth to Rag Dolly in Albany in 1984. Bill Gibson's modern fantasy about a little girl who's dying, who dreams of an adventure with Raggedy Ann and her friends in a fight against General Doom, the personification of death, emerged as a different kind of musical. A contemporary fable with all the elements of a classic fairy tale, but with a happy ending, where love triumphs over death. Patricia Snyder invited Natalia Sats to Albany to see Rag Dolly. She thought this new American musical would play well in Moscow, and Madame Sats agreed. They made plans to exchange performances between their theaters. Rag Dolly composer and lyricist Joe Raposo shared his enthusiasm for the potential tour with the CBS broadcast group, and CBS came forward with a major grant to underwrite the trip to the Soviet Union. There was only one final hurdle. September of 1984, Natalia Sots and I met with Deputy Minister George Ivanov and asked that our exchange be allowed. At that time, there was no cultural exchange agreement in place, but it wasn't until this past December 9th, 1985, after the cultural exchange agreement was signed, we were notified by the Soviet Union. Okay, you're invited contact and communication through scientific and cultural exchanges in the long run, in the long run, are the best vehicles for achieving true international understanding and permanent peace. All Americans can take pride in this company as they engage in people-to-people -people diplomacy on stage and off. Without Natalia Satz's tenacity, this would have never happened. When our gang marched into this auditorium, the Children's Musical Theater Company was grouped over on one side, and they stood up and applauded us. Having the two companies on stage, yes, what an interchange. It really was a uh, cultural exchange in the highest order. From Moscow, congratulations to Children's Theater Association. the first American company to perform in the Soviet Union in seven years. An awesome honor and responsibility. We had two days to rehearse and install the scenery and lights, and one day to put it all together. The show's uh, it was a monster at the egg, so the biggest thing was getting the scenery here. We finally got the show up there. The show is so technically complex. I might add, just in the nick of time. Many people who are on the show in different parts of the theater, and because of the language barrier. Mm -hmm. I need this light. See this number here? Four. See the four there? Four. Okay. Okay. Oh, you just don't do all the night. No more for Hot sheet? No, but... I think... I think we can just stick it in. Oh, my God. I have a few weeks of Russian lessons, you know, uh, to my name. That's it. And, um, and here I am in Moscow for, uh, Starring in the first production after six years, what if I make a mistake? <laughs> Can you really drink that? 
Oh. I want a Babe Ruth. I want a salad. I'd go for some shredded wheat myself. This ben, was, what? This was one of this moment. <laughs> to him as him again. And then if you want to, we can do a him again in Russian. Help, Vicky. He's here again. No, it's him again. Это опять он. Это опять он. Это опять опять он. Okay. So, you swing around. Him again. The little translations have worked like a charm. I think they've brought the audience even closer, and I think the way we chose to do them was right. We did the action in English and then had a little aside in Russian. You're real. This is one country where even a small attempt in the language brings big results, and um, it's helped us. What's wonderful about it is we have Soviet technicians and American technicians working together on the same show. I ask our musical people who are working with Soviet musical people in the orchestra, or I ask our technical people who are working with Soviet technical people backstage jointly, I say, what's the level of competence there? And the word I got back was superb. It's the wellspring. It is the place where all our tradition of Western music begin. It's a country so totally steeped in musical tradition, richness, um, culturally, it's the source. Their commitment and their aggressiveness in their playing is extraordinary. Not, you know, not that American musicians are not that, uh, but you see like, like a muscular intensity, you know, in the violin players, for instance, the hand. You know, we almost think of that as a, as a cliché, you know, in the European players, but it's, it's phenomenal. We have a slightly uh, more difficult time with them in the, in the sort of swing field. But just tell them bar, from bar 111 is a big dance until bar 139, so please play out. What, what do you mean by that? Play out louder. Loud, loud, louder. Loud. Uh, and it's um, no different, I suppose, than, than, than maybe Americans who can't ever achieve the total Rachmaninoff experience. I don't know. Soviet composers come to me and say, your music is wonderful. Hot dog, one for Uncle Sam there, and uh, I feel damn straight good about it. Really do. No, I, I, maybe you could hit it a little more softly and let it ring. Uh-huh. Bravo. <laughs> he has no heart. Okay, 
where's she going to be? Inside. You can't see her heart. All right. All right. Raggedy Ann? Raggedy Ann! Always hungry. I could do with a bite before I... <laughs> Overwhelming, fantastic, clapping, many, many, many curtain calls, applause, flowers. It's a fantastic experience to see how the Soviet audiences have related to it. They are the cutest kids. <laughs> they are so sweet. When I walked out there in the lobby, I never felt so wanted in my life. Okay. I'm playing a character that's all about love. I love you. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I don't have any problems. <laughs> They've opened up the door as if uh, this was our home. I walk backstage and the stagehands uh, like to stop and uh, ask me about my costume, which is a little bit out of the ordinary. I haven't seen anything quite like it. That's cool, uh, pal. Just you know how the mouth works. They're very warm, very appreciative of the fact that we're here and what we're doing. It's been wonderful. We went to the Bolshoi this morning. We watched. We don't speak any language, but when we get into ballet class, we all know the same terms. Yeah, I mean, it was so exciting. I love you. That's the motto of Raggedy Ann, brilliantly played by Ivy Austin. The production was well produced. The rhythm of the production was crisp, the gestures of the actors expressive, and the action on stage... The special effects in the production were all highly ingenious. They loved it. They wouldn't... I mean, we went backstage and they were still out there clapping. No, they just loved it. The direction and the music, the play, the scenery, the costumes, they've loved all of it. And they've been very complimentary, and I've been very pleased with the notices that have come out at this point. This is more than everyone could expect. The combination of the music, the choreography, the story, uh, the kind of young freshness in the production, I think, is... Uh, very impressive to them. They kept talking about it being a choreographic style. So it was nice to know that I brought something that was of a new nature to the very home of wonderful staging. That, that was a compliment. Uh, they're not given to wild applause and uh, enthusiasm in public places, but they really did last night, and that was a big treat. I had never, since I left amateur theater, experienced theater uh, as as an art performed for its own sake without any dollar sign attached to it.
To touch Regidi M is a very great happiness. Joe Raposo sang his Sesame Street songs in a special concert for young Russians who responded at intermission. Parents have the same aspirations for their kids that I have for mine. This land was made for you and me. They show their own kind of love when they clap the song just to show you how much they like them. We had eight performances. But more than 12,000 children saw this performance. The children up on stage make one want to cry. We could solve a lot if they'd let us. I've been really impressed with how well they take care of and pay attention to the creative instincts of children here. They found it fascinating that we use theater to teach curriculum. For example, with Rag Dolly, um, one of the lessons that I taught in an American classroom was a map skills lesson with the Mississippi and the car <laughs> We have brought with us um, artwork, letters uh, from the children of the United States and young children in America who would like to have a pen pal. And somebody translates it. Говорит, что здесь письма от американских студентов. This experience has not only been a terrific one in terms of production, but also a terrific one in terms of arts and education. Midway through Rag Dolly's run in Moscow, the Soviet elite attended the traditional protocol performance, an evening set aside for cultural officials and special guests. U.S. Ambassador to the Soviet Union Arthur Hartman was there with his wife, Donna. Despite the formal atmosphere, the audience reaction to Rag Dolly was the same prolonged applause and several curtain calls. Ambassador Hartman and his wife celebrated Rag Dolly's success with a gala reception for the Asipa Company at Spasso House, the American ambassador's residence in Moscow. Warm congratulations from American embassy officials mixed with a delicacy from home not otherwise available in Moscow, pizza. Near the end of Rag Dolly's engagement in the Soviet capital, a sign of approval from the Kremlin. Peter Demichev, Minister of Culture of the USSR, attended a performance and, to the dismay of his security detail, ventured backstage to greet the American performers. May we come back? Thank you. <laughs> Minister Demichev posed for pictures with Raggedy Ann and told Mrs. Snyder that he would like to see Yasipa return to Moscow in the near future. Rag Dolly, he pronounced was a great success. Until next time. <laughs> next time. And we believe that through the theater we can help to make that bridge of understanding. The desire for friendship is there. It's apparent everywhere. People to people, there's no problem. I'd like to think that we're doing our part and this is where it starts. Actors, singers, dancers, technicians working side by side with their Soviet counterparts. And finding out that we all share the same problems, the same hopes, the same aspirations, they're in different languages. The two peoples are learning more about each other and I think it's all to the good and, and that's what we need. It's one on one. It's people to people, and that's that's the way we have to. That's the only kind of difference you can make. It's just some more people in another part of the world who have feelings, 
and who live day to day just as we do. Unfortunately, there, there is a separation um, between countries, but I don't think there's a separation between people. We share more similarities than we do differences. They become part of our company as we became part of their company. I'm going back with one impression, which is that we need a great deal more of this. There are a lot of myths on our side about their society. There's a tremendous amount of misconception on their side about our society. It's so necessary for the two superpowers in the world to communicate with one another. We're delivering our talents. We hope you like it, and they loved it. It was a purity of experience there that's been unique in my life, and I think that's what I'll remember as the essence of it.